It is no longer news that Zimbabwe has pledged to pay $3.5 billion to the white farmers. We all know the history of the white farmers in Zimbabwe, which began in the year 1889, when C.C. John Rhodes led the British South African Company and to take over the country. The land belonged to the kingdom of the Ndembele and the Shonas. They began to explore the lands, they took over the country, and in the year 1895, they renamed it uh, Rhodesia. Even after the first Chamoranga battles that the Ndebele fought, the Shonas fought them, they won, and they began to rule the country as their own. They began to take the lands to give to the whites. Millions of hectares of land were given to the whites. They began to rule the country as their own. Over 50% of the most productive lands in Zimbabwe were given to the whites. In the year 1964, the great people of Zimbabwe became tired of the whole thing and then started the Second Chimuranga War, which lasted for 14 years, from the year 1964 to the year 1979. Then came the Lancaster House Agreement in the year 1980 that gained independence for Zimbabwe. Today, we are talking about compensating these people with $3.5 billion. What are we going to call this? First of all, this is neocolonialism. What is neocolonialism? Neocolonialism is the continuation of colonization after independence. I will say it again. Neocolonialism is the continuation of colonization after independence. Colonization is to take over the sovereignty of a nation. So neocolonialism is to take over the sovereignty of a nation even after independence. And that is what we are seeing in Zimbabwe. Look at, you claim that you have been given independence, but now you are asked to pay people who spoiled your land during independence. Now, where are we even going to get the money from? Because we know that over 7.4 million Zimbabweans are on the verge of starvation, according to the United Nations. And over 3.4 million Zimbabweans are currently scattered all over the world, and thousands are living almost on a daily basis. Where are we going to get, going to get the money to pay these people? According to Finance Minister Ntulin Kube, we are going to run around the world to get this money within 12 months. From where? Is it from IMF? From Paris Club? From who? From where? How are we going to pay back? These people are going to also use the money to buy back the lands. So this is a very, very serious problem. Paying back the loan is going to be a very serious issue. So this is going to lead back to complete recolonization of Zimbabwe. And it's a very serious issue. Two. This is bully. To bully is to harm somebody that is weak. And we Africans, we are weak. This is not the first time we have heard of such kind of bully against Africans. First of all, how did Zimbabwe even get the independence in 1980? After the 14 years of the uh, Second Chimaranga War, Mozambique, Tanzania, and Zamb Zambia were called by the US and UK pressurized to ask the Zimbabweans to end the Second Chimoranga War and go to the Lancaster Agreement House for agreement. That was because they pressurized them and they were going to withdraw support and they were going to, not going to allow them to have any base to launch attacks against the white Rhodesia. This caused the people of Zimbabwe to go to take negotiation terms which were unfavorable to us. Inheriting $700 million colonial debt from the white farmers, that nothing, no issue of land was going to be discussed, was going to be discussed for over 10 years after independence, and that you were only going to get the land from the Zimbabweans after and then if they were willing to sell the land, and that the, uh, um, Britain was going to finance 50% of the payments. What kind of agreement is that? How can I have independence and you have my land? This is pure neocolonialism. And that is the same issue we're facing all across Africa. So paying them back is also part of the neocolonialism. They're going to take back the land. Number two, we saw this also happen to Umar Gaddafi in the year 2003. 21st of December 1988, a plane crashed because of bomb blast in Lokabi, Scotland. In the year 2001, a Libyan by the name Abdul Basset was convicted for being the one behind the attack. They say it was Muhammad Gaddafi that sent him to carry out the attack. In the year 2003, 
Muammar Gaddafi was forced to pay about $2.7 billion reparation to the 270 uh, victims, the families of the 270 victims of the Lukabi bomb attack or plane crash. Gaddafi had to pay, even though he said that he was not the one who carried the attack. It was a, a condition for them to leave the sanctions on Libya, the United Nations sanctions and the US sanctions, and to remove Libya from the list of state sponsors of terrorism. Gaddafi had to pay. This May 2020, the Guardian newspaper in UK wrote that that was actually a miscarriage of justice. There's no proof that Abdel Basset or even Gaddafi were behind the attack of the uh, Lukabi bomb blast or destruction of the airplane. But the injustice has been done and they know that if they say the truth, they're going to pay back the money and they are going to redeem the image of Muammar Gaddafi. The same issue happened in the year 1825, after Haiti got her independence in the year 1804. The King of France, King Charles, sent warships with over 500 cannons, forcing them to accept to pay 150 million gold francs to France as colonial debt. This was about 10 times the GDP of Haiti, and they had to pay the debt. They took, it took them over 122 years to pay off this debt. And today, Haiti is the poorest nation in the Western Hemisphere, among the poorest nations in the world, with over 80% poverty rates. What about in the year 18, 1958, when Secretary wanted to gain independence for uh, uh, Guinea? The French told him, we're giving you conditions, France, Africa, we're going to continue colonizing you even after independence. We're going to make you rich. We're going to do this one for you. He told them, point black, I prefer freedom in poverty to riches in chains. They got angry. Over 3,000 French nationals became angry, destroyed everything, even the bobs, schools, everything they destroyed. Eventually, Guinea got her independence. 1960, Silvio Olympianos. The uh, leader of Togo wanted to get her independence. He approached France, and France then gave him 11 conditions. He had to accept the conditions to, uh, uh, to get the so-called independence. Until today, 14 African nations are binded by that, those conditions. Paying colonial tax, speaking French, having French troops in your, in your country. So this is the kind of conditions that we Africans have been having. We have been facing all manner of bullying from the new colonial masters. This also, paying $3.5 billion is injustice. It is unjust. There is no justice in this. How can those whose lands we are taking over pay reparations to those who took over their lands? How can you pay somebody that came to rob you? It is the person that robbed you, that is on you. This is injustice. Fourth, this also is a message to Africans that we are weak. It's a message also to South Africa that even to expropriate lands in South Africa is not going to work as easy as we think. Because even uh, 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 Mandela, when he came out from prison, 11th of February of 1990, thought he was going to take back the land from the white people, but he knew that you cannot start what you cannot finish. That you cannot start what you cannot finish. That you do not buy it what you cannot chew. If he had took, uh, taken the land from the whites, the same thing happening in Zimbabwe would have been happening right now in South Africa. This is because we are weak. So what are we going to do about this? Now, the solution is that this is a call to unity. This is a call to African unity. Africa must unite because the strength of Africa is directly proportional to the unity of Africa. The weakness of Africa is inversely proportional to the unity of Africa. So the more unity we have, the more strength we have. The more disunited we are, the less stronger we are. So we must unite. We must unite continentally and we must unite globally. We must unite continentally to form the United Continent or the United States of Africa, one nation. And with the power we gain as one nation, together with allies of Africa in Asia, in Latin America, which shall form with Russia and so on, which shall then have the power to resist new colonialism in Africa. Now, urgently, we need to do something about this. 
which is why we need global unity. We need to unite globally, just like the Black Lives Matter movement going on across the world. We now need to unite to do something about what is going on in Zimbabwe. We must unite and begin to petition the world that we do not need the sanctions in Zimbabwe because since the year 2002, Zimbabwe has been under sanctions from the US and the EU. Because in the year 2000, the people of Zimbabwe began to expropriate the lands from the whites forcefully. In the year 2002, sanctions were placed on them by the European Union and by the United States of America. And since then, the sanctions have remained. By the year 2008, because of the sanctions, inflation rates in Zimbabwe got to over 231 billion percent, causing mass famine in the country. Many Zimbabweans had to disperse out of the country, mainly fled to South Africa, fled to all parts of the world, some fled to UK and so on. So we need to stop these sanctions. We can't have one African nation being sanctioned and the rest of Africa are behaving as though nothing is happening. If we allow Zimbabwe to fall further, we should also get ready to fall. Same thing happened to Ghana, happened to Burkina Faso, 1983, 1987. Within four years, the country was being rebuilt by Thomas Sankara. In 1987, he was killed. And the whole policies he began were reversed. Today, Burkina Faso is nowhere. Look at Libya. Libya used to be the richest country in Africa by per capita income. Today, where is Libya? So we must come together and build a hedge from Africa. We must come together to stop the evil against us. And we can achieve that through unity. Through the continental unity of Africa and through intercontinental unity. Unity between Africa and her allies. But right now we have started uh, something about this. And we need the cooperation of all Africans all over the world. We have started a petition to the World Bank, to the US, to the UN, and to all relevant authorities telling them to leave the sanctions on Zimbabwe. And we need the African Union, we need all organizations to come together and back up this petition to send a message that we do not need these sanctions to continue. If not, we have to do something. We have to pressurize them until the sanctions in Zimbabwe are lifted and until the $3.5 billion colonial debt, which is what it is, is also taken away. This is what we must do. Then, secondly, we must begin to press for reparations. We suffered 400 years of slave trade for the white people, 100 years of colonization, 100 years of racism among African Americans, and right now we are still under oppression. So we are the ones that should be paid reparations, and we are not doing anything about it. Look at how 4,500 farmers, white farmers, took over millions of lands in Zimbabwe. Now they are insisting that they must pay reparations. What happened to them? They lost what they stole. But we, we suffered injustice. Why are we wasting time to ask for reparations? We must go for our reparations. We must ask them to pay us hundreds of trillions of dollars for the harms that they did for us, to us. For over 200 million Africans who died in slavery and new colonization and new colonialism and slavery and uh, 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 racism. So we must go for the reparations. So this is time for us to take actions. So. The petitions, the petition has been released. So let us sign the petition, sponsor it if you have the money to sponsor it. If you can, share the petition to groups, share the petitions all over the social media, on Twitter, on WhatsApp, on Facebook. Send messages to people to sign the petition. Let us get millions of people to sign the petition. Then we're going to take the petition to the relevant authorities, telling them that we, the African people, demand that the sanctions be lifted and that 3.5 billion dollars debt be removed. This is what we must do now. Because the time to favor Africa, the time for Africa to rise again has come. No more colonization and no more divide and rule because we have found out that we are one people and that we can achieve the destiny that we have when we are united. So this is the call to unity. Sign the petition, sponsor it. Let's work together as a team to gain the, the, the removal of the Zimbabwe sanctions, to, to leave the sanctions and to remove the $3.5 billion colonial debt and also for us to begin to work together to gain our reparations for what was done to our ancestors indirectly or even directly to us. This is Ete Chimere Wonzo, leader of the One Africa Family Organization, author of The Wisdom and the Power of African Unity and author of 202 Questions and Answers about African Progress. I'm counting on you to do something about this. 
together we shall achieve the African vision, Uhuru, Ubuntu.